is a brisk 26 degrees outside in Milwaukee, but inside the Al McGuire Center, it is heating up as the Marquette Golden Eagles take on the Northwestern Wildcats here for some Thursday night basketball on MUTV. I'm John Steppe, joined alongside me is John Leuzzi and Amy Galaszewski on sidelines. John, big night today, big test for Marquette against a Big Ten team. Yeah, for sure. Every Marquette has been tested against opponents like Morgan State, St. Francis, Brooklyn, and Illinois State, but whenever you play a Big Ten opponent, John, it is really a big test to see what current team we have on the court for this Golden Eagles. And as a first-year head coach for Megan Duffy, it is a great test for her because she has such a young team and such a young starting lineup to come out onto the court against a, pool, against a Northwestern team that really is bringing a lot of veterans players back tonight and speaking of that young team Marquette will be without one of their key veteran players Selena Watt is out with an undisclosed injury was not participating in team warm-ups John how does Marquette adapt without their leading scorer. Yeah, without their leading scorer, Selena Lott, who in the first three games is averaging 17 and 0.7 points in those three games. You're not gonna have her in tonight's game, which is a big, big loss for this Golden Eagles team, but they're gonna have to rely a lot on Narell Lubo, the freshman. Cameron Taylor's gonna have to come in, place a little bit, and Altia Anderson's gonna have to use that senior leadership to help on the offense for Marquette, because right now, this offense for Marquette, it's not as strong as the defense. It's getting better every game, but it's definitely gonna be a big loss for the Golden Eagles because a lot has been taking all the three-pointers for the most part for the season so far. And what do you see as the key for Marquette? Yeah, for Marquette, they got to play defense like they did against Illinois State. It was probably their best defensive game of the season. And you're going to have Chloe Murata and Lauren Van Clunen on the big on the rebounds. With Murata coming That's a in, bigger lineup yeah, than for maybe sure. previous Marquette teams have For had. sure. And you, when Murata she's at, has 30, she's averaging 10 rebounds per game, all defensive rebounds. She's been having a great start to her sophomore season. She didn't start, see much starting time last year as a freshman. So she will be big in here. But for the offense, it's Jordy King just relaxing a little bit. She has a, she, a couple turnovers in the early few minutes of that first of the first half, so she just needs to relax a little bit. So you know, because she's still learning that guard position. She's more of a wing player, but she's stepping into that big hole of the point guard for this Megan Duffy team this year. And then on the flip side, Northwestern Wildcats coming off a win in their season opener against Loyola Maryland. What's the key for them to go 2-0? They really have to keep on feeding the ball to Lindsey Pouliot. She is the facilitator. She is the lead scorer of this Wildcats offense. In that game against Loyola, Maryland, in 32 minutes, she scored 25 points. She, last year, as a, as a sophomore, she led the team in minutes played. She was third in points, and she led them in free throws made, and also she's going to be a big stop for Marquette's defense if they want to get a win here tonight against the Northwestern. And meanwhile, as we get closer to tip off, a quick look at the starting lineup. For Northwestern, it is Sydney Wood, the 5'11 guard, a sophomore from Olney, Maryland. Lindsey Pulliam coming off a team high 25 points against Loyola, Maryland. The 5'10 guard. Meanwhile, 5'9 guard Veronica Burden, 6'4 center Abby Wolf, and rounding it out, 6'2 post player Abby Scheid. Meanwhile, for the Marquette Golden Eagles, Narelle Lubo gets her first career start in a Marquette uniform with the injury to Selena Lott. Also starting Jordan King, the freshman 5'11 guard from Rockton, Illinois. Izzy Spingola, the senior guard from Chicago. And Lauren Van Clunen, the redshirt junior from Mason, Ohio. Excuse me, and Floyd Murata, cannot forget about her. Already averaging a double-double going into play today. She started every game this season. That trend will continue as we are just about set to get underway. are officially underway for this Big East Big Ten battle here at the Al. Northwestern winning the tip. Nice defense there for Murata. And that's what Marquette's going to have to do. They got to keep on the other opponent in the offense. If they want to get to turn the ball over. Help defense on Pulliam. Shide three-pointer off the mark. 
Rebound right there for Lubo, making a quick impact with her first career start. Van Clunen working the post. It looked like she was trying to find Murata. Instead, Burden stepped in the way. And now Northwestern on the other side. Burden gets past Murata. No good. Offensive rebound and bucket for Abby Wolf as the Wildcats get on the board first. And that's something for Marquette. They're going to have to fix. They have to get the defensive rebounds if they want to stay in this game because as is shown in the past three games, their offense has had a struggle getting early, going, get going early on. So they got to get good on defense first. Lubo, screened by Van Clunen. Here's King driving, kicks out. Murata, she finds Fingola. Murata, King as shot clock expires, air balls it, and that'll be not exactly the way that Marquette wanted that possession to end. Not for sure, and this is something that Northwestern is gonna bring throughout the entire game. They're gonna be on the one-on-one one -on -one coverage. This is what a big power five conference does when you face them. Veronica Burden taking the ball up. Scheid finds Pulliam. Nice screen there for Abby Wolf. Wolf gets it down low, post. Just about nothing that Norell Lubo could do. An easy two points, now it's 4-0 Wildcats. Wildcats really seen the lane to get their players. Great pass there. And now Van Kluden gets Marquette's first points of the game. Marquette fans can sit down, the tradition to stand until the first basket is made. On the other end, that's shied off the mark. And for Marquette, Van Lauren Van Clunen had a big second quarter against Illinois State on Sunday, and she really worked the post well. So she's gonna have to do that here tonight to get the offense going. Barada top of the key off the mark. And Northwestern wasting no time going the other way. Pulliam. She Gets a quick shot off, doesn't quite work out so well. Wolf though with another offensive rebound, sets up a shy three-pointer. Already seeing Northwestern's physical presence in the post making an impact. For sure, and that's, that's what they do with the big bodies there. And Wolf really has been holding that underground on the boards. And Spingola does what Spingola does best, hits a three. And now Marquette's back within two, seven to five. Yes, Spignola came in into the day, hitting .435 from the, from the three-point line. So that's definitely something Marquette's gonna have to do on the offense to get some points. And down low, it's Wolf off the mark. Lubo with another rebound. Lubo, she finds King. King threads a needle there to Coy Murata. Murata, a lot of contact, no whistle. And Northwestern goes the other way. In the corner. A nice look there from Scheid. Rebound from Coy Murata, who's been averaging a double-double going into play today. She's been a big presence for Marquette and a big leader on this young Marquette team. And now Van Poonen off the mark. Scheid with the rebound. Close one here so far. And that's an open three off the mark for Scheid, but another Wildcat offensive rebound. Yeah, Golden Eagles can't allow to have an open three, but then also to leave open that rebound. They just can't afford to get those, min those mistakes early on in the game. A 7-4 rebounding advantage for the Wildcats. Here's Wolf, five seconds to shoot. She airballs it. Lubo brings it keeps it in bounds, and there's the official whistle, shot clock violation. Interesting that Lubo just didn't let the ball go out of bounds. I know he was going with the shot clock, but you know, it, it's just one of those things that you have to stop the momentum that you just started after getting that, re after that great possession on defense. And now Lubo, Golden Eagles looking to retake that momentum. Spingola 
Nice pass from Murata when she got the double team. Finds Lauren Van Koonen. And now all of a sudden it's a tied game, seven apiece. That's a, this is a great test for Marquette to get back into this game when they were down early. They, they're fighting themselves in that game. They're gonna have to play a full 40 minutes to get a win out of here. They can't, it's not gonna be like the past three games for Marquette where they were able to get a lead early in some point of the game. This game is gonna come down to that last buzzer in my opinion, John. Yeah, and you're already starting to see the signs of it right now. You were mentioning about how Marquette's had a few slow starts. Looking a little better today. Burden driving against King. She finds a wide open Abby Wool. Closest defender is over at Schrader Hall. King drives. Finds an open Lauren Van Koonen. Van Koonen maybe testing her range a little bit off the mark. Nice effort by Rubo trying to save that one. Instead, it's Northwestern. Other way, Pulliam jump shot off the mark. Izzy Spingola comes up with the rebound. That's a great job by Jordan King to draw all the way back to stop Pulliam to make her not have an easy shot there and a good rebound there by Big Spingola. And meanwhile, the second turnover of the day too many steps, try and thread a really tight space there, was Narelle Lubo. And with that, we will send it over to Amy Galashevsky, our sideline reporter. Amy, what do you have? and belief that they, she has in them really makes a big difference in the play. And you have to think with the schedule, it really does test that confidence because you have Northwestern today. Later on, you have Mississippi State also heading to the Al. There's not really an easy start here to the Megan Duffy era. It is really right away going through a lot of Power 5 programs. And I think what it, this is going to benefit Marquette is that when you, you, you face tough teams like Mississippi State and Northwestern in non-conference play, it's going to help them when they open Big East play because, you know, they, they did they were coming in as that eight, that ninth team in the Big East in the preseason poll. So it's going to help them build themselves, get that chemistry going, get the, they get the, all the connection stuff down because they're going to prove themselves, they're going to prove the entire conference wrong. And that's really what the mindset is. They want to take that underdog mentality from into the Big East play. And you have to think when you're playing these, power five teams in the non-con that when you get to Big East okay all of a sudden Creighton won the better Big East teams doesn't seem quite so bad no it doesn't and I think it's going to show a lot of teaching uh, and something that Duffy loves to do as a head coach in the non-conference season and they're going to use these lessons that they've learned help it to their advantage in conference play because you got to play DePaul, you got to play Creighton, you got to play Villanova, St. John's and all those other teams in the Big East and they're going to give tests to Marquette so it's going to help them with having a tough non-conference schedule uh, definitely especially with when it's a young team when you don't have many returning starters besides Lod and Spinola. And now we are just about ready to get back underway. Altia Anderson checks in for the Golden Eagles. Down low, Sydney Wood. She kicks out to Burden. Wolf with the screen, Barquette trapping, and a wide open Wolf. She passes on the open look. Pass out of bounds. 
off of Marquette defender officials. Say. That's a good defensive stop there by Marquette to make Northwestern go into almost a scramble to find Wolf, who really doesn't have to go much in height to get the ball off the basket, off the board into the basket. And nice three look off the mark from Veronica Burden, the 5'9 sophomore guard from Newton, Massachusetts. And meanwhile, Jordan King doing it all herself. Great job by the freshman just to oh, go down the lane, find the basket, and for the layup. Great job, great IQ there on the play. And now Van Cloonen gets her hands on it, flying onto the scorer's table. And that's the player that she loves to be. She wants to fight for the ball, and this is something that Duffy needs, says it is the Marquette way. Fight for the ball to the very last minute. And a few people at the scorer's table, if they're falling asleep at all, they're wide awake now. Another Northwestern offensive rebound has kind of been the story so far today. And shot off the mark, Abby Wolf with yet another rebound, and she gets that one to go. She's up to eight points on the day. Always tough for an opponent to stop a 6-4 center. Uh, she who doesn't really need to have to go in the air. She just has to get the arm up to put it off the board into the basket. Something that Marquette is going to have to figure out, how do, how do we stop this? Because they're just going to keep on feeding Wolf the ball in that situation. And you will get Wolf's stat line so far. Hard to get much better. Eight points on four for six shooting. Team high four rebounds. And that's a turnover. Fast break, other side. Sydney Wolf gets the ball poked away. Out of bounds. Northwestern ball on the inbound. Yeah, that's the third turnover of the first quarter for Marquette. And that's a good sign that the number is so low. It's normally a little bit higher in the first quarter in the past couple of games. So they're definitely fixing some struggles so far. And another whistle. LT Anderson picks up the foul shortly after entering in the game. Inbound out to Courtney Shaw. Wood at the top of the key. And that's gonna be a moving screen on Abby Scheid. She, you could tell just based on her look, knew. Yeah, I know, didn't quite get set there and that'll be Marquette ball. And these are the things that Marquette has got to take to their advantage to get the ball back in their hands to build that lead up. They're only down by two right now, but they can't get too comfortable on, and they, they have to keep on going. And Northwestern has not really been shooting the ball well. And that's me a Jordan King travel. Turnover number four in the first quarter here for the Golden Eagles. Bingola guarding Burden. Looked like Chad was gonna set his screen, instead goes down low. Pick and roll, Burden wide open, three off the mark. The Wildcats couldn't buy a shot. I think Claire Kaifus really got lucky there. The ball didn't go in. She like let that big open three for Burden there. Van Clunen finds Anderson. Anderson over to Spingola, maybe a little too much on that pass. Spingola can't quite get her hands on that one. That'll be Northwestern ball. Yeah, the passing hasn't been great the past couple attempts on the offensive side for Marquette. They need to relax a little bit, make them play, and let Northwestern play to them. Don't make Marquette play to Northwestern. The Marquette doesn't really have to, has to relax a little bit. They're d only down by two. It's not like they're down by a big bunch right now. They're still in this game. And meanwhile, a couple Marquette substitutions happened just a minute ago. Floy Murata and, as you just mentioned, Claire Kaifas checked in. Lubo and Van Cloonen went out. And it'll be Marquette Ball. King faces the double team. Backs out. Kaifas finds Spingola. Murata says, hey, I'll give it right back to you, to Izzy. Shot off the mark, and Courtney Shaw comes up with the rebound. And Scheid pass deflected by Altia Anderson, and she picks it up. Fast break, Anderson 
She looks for a teammate. She finds Jordan King. King to Spingola. Spingola three just off the mark. That's a great job there by Anderson to find King up at top, to find Spinola up big. And Wood to Burden. Three shied off the mark. And Altia Anderson is really gonna have to come up big in the rebounds when you don't have Lauren Van Clunen up there all, as well. Neither team has scored in two minutes. Hyphus, she can't hit, and that'll be a foul. Looks like on Chloe Murata. Her first. A good trend right now for the Marquette defense is Northwestern won for their last seven field goals. So Marquette really stepping up the defensive play from the first couple minutes of the first quarter. But if you look on the offensive side, John, four turnovers in the last four and a half minutes. That's something that Megan Duffy is really going to have to get going in that second quarter and when they when end the first quarter in the hell in that huddle. And it's really been an ugly shooting game for both yeah. teams. 26% for Northwestern, 33 for Marquette. And then from three, 17% for Northwestern, 20 for Marquette. And Courtney Shaw finds an opening. Up T Anderson can't really do anything inside the restricted arc. And now Northwestern hits the shot. They lead 13-9, and they break their scoring drought. Meanwhile, Marquette trying to break a three-minute, 30-second scoring drought. Kaifes to Lubo. Lubo at the buzzer, off the mark, just hits the front of the rim. And with that, Marquette with a little bit of work to do at the end of the first quarter, down 13-9. Yeah, they do have a lot. They've, they're 0 for their last four field goals, four turnovers in the last five and a half minutes. And they did, they're in the game. They're only down by 13-9, which is close right now. It's a little bit of an ugly first quarter for both teams. But if you're making Duffy, you got to be happy with how the defensive is playing so far in this first quarter. And I think that's my biggest takeaway from the first quarter. And it seems like we've been around this 13-9 before that 11-9 score pretty much the whole game, Marquette hasn't scored in the last 351. Yeah, they really haven't. And, you know, you look at this team and the offense really hasn't been there in the first quarter throughout the entire season so far. It's, this is really looking a lot like the Illinois State game where they Marquette got that win in an ugly game, but it was the, the biggest win for Duffy and the most proud she's been of the three games for Marquette. And... Looking at a quick breakdown of the stats, both teams shooting right around 30%. Northwestern at 30, Marquette at 31. Each team one for six from long range. A lot of turnovers so far, John. Five for the Golden Eagles, four for Northwestern. And that's something that Marquette is gonna have to clean up. They've had a lot of turnovers in the first three games. Jordan King has 15 on the season. You add her one, add her two here tonight. So you have 17 turnovers in the first four games for a freshman who's projected to be the Big East freshman of the year. But you got, also got to look at, at what she's been changing in her style of play. And during her AAU and high school days, she played a lot of the wing position. Now she's at the point guard position, a different thing. And now just a couple more minutes. Really, you have to think that Jordan King would be a key part of this Marquette team going down the stretch. For sure, and she has a lot of positive, she has a lot of excitement for a Marquette fan to look into her. She's projected to be the Big East Freshman of the Year uh, in the preseason in the preseason poll. She doing everything that she can on the offense as a facilitator. A new, she's learning a new position. So you know. Coming from that wing position to a point guard is a little bit of a change for her, so maybe that's why she has those so many turnovers in the first quarters and in the first four games now. But definitely a lot of excitement for a Marquette fan to see for a player that stayed with Marquette after after the new coaching change. And you look at two turnovers in the first quarter, but what that could be down the road for her could be quite the weapon at the point guard position. For sure, and 
this point guard position that Stuffy said in the media day to us, it is going to be an ever-evolving position, and they're going to just keep on feeding information to all these players. And at, by the end of the season, you're going to have a real good point guard in Jordan King, in my opinion. And really, she's talking at that about kind of using some weed guards yes. in the meantime. Meanwhile, back in action, Spingola finds Altia Anderson. Pipus finds Spingola. Van Kunen, one-on-one, -on -one height advantage by several inches. Can't get that to translate into bucket. Valtia Anderson gets the rebound, gets the foul, and is heading to the line. That's a good rebound there by Anderson, and then draws the foul to go to the line shooting two. And Marquette has been a good free throw shooting team through their first three games. You gotta get the easy baskets in these kind of games, John. And first free throws of the night here for either team. Coming 29 seconds into the second quarter. Was not expecting to be saying that tonight. And Anderson misses both free throws. It's a good attempt by Van Clunen to get that rebound there. And Courtney Shaw off the mark. Anderson gets the rebound, redeems herself, and now Van Clunen on the fast break. Can she get it and go? No, it's off the mark. Izzy Spingola, though, with offensive rebound. And Marquette will reset. Just a little too much fast velocity in there by Van Clunen. Anderson off the mark. She can't seem to be getting her shot going so far today. Marquette four for 16 from the arc. From the field goal, I rather. And somebody we haven't talked too much about, Birdie Galernick, now into the game along with Lauren Satterwhite. And that's a turnover, Van Clunen, she finds Lubo. Lubo slices through a paint, no good. And that'll be a Northwestern rebound in the hands of Sydney Wood. Marquette just needs to slow down when they go up for that layup. A little just too much velocity, too much power that they're going there, and that's why it's not going in. And Courtney Shaw, she gets on the board. Again, another bucket. She's up to four points. Now Lubo finds Kaifas, Kaifas down to Anderson. Anderson kind of ran out of space, but enough contact for the foul, and she will go right back to the free throw line about a minute and a half later. And now you're gonna have King back up there and running the offense along with Lubo. Kaifas coming out, but for Marquette, they had an opportunity to get some rebounds when Wolf wasn't on the court, but now she is checked back in for Northwestern. So that is another challenge that comes back into the game for the Golden Eagles. And first free throw is good for Anderson. Her first points of the day. And the second attempt is also good. So after missing her first two, she goes back and hits her next two. Fifteen eleven, Northwestern on top. Glarnick, the five eight senior guard. And now it's Wool. Couple feet away from the basket, she gets it to go after spending a fair amount of time on the rim. Yeah, Wolf now five for seven, 10 points on the day for the Wildcats. King, she passes out, but it looks like a foul away from the ball on Birdie Glarnick. Glarnick averaged 2.1 points per game last season. Now King inbounding it, looking for somebody. She finds Lauren Van Poonen. King finds Anderson. Anderson jump shot off the mark. Spingwell goes for the offensive rebound. Can't quite time it right. And Northwestern on the other side, it's Sydney Wood. Northwestern really taking all the opportunities of the shots out for Marquette, leading to these ugly kind of attempts.
Wood finds Galernick. King faked out on defense, but Northwestern misses and another Northwestern offensive rebound. Out of bounds, and it will stay with Wildcats. Good defensive presence continuing here in the second quarter for Marquette, but it's really the offense that's struggling so far. Marquette, four for 18 from the field goal, one for six from the arc, and they're only two for four from the line from the free throw. Lauren Satterwhite brings up the ball, and Jordan King jumps right into passing route, goes for the layup, gets it to go. Marquette back within four. Great steal there by King to read that pass there from Northwestern and steal it and make it run to the basket there. Great job by the freshman. Satterwhite, probably not gonna pass it to Jordan King's direction. <laughs> oh wait, no, she just did. And it looked like Lauren Van Coon was gonna get into the steal party here. Instead, a little too much contact. I'm gonna call the Altia foul. Anderson with the foul. Her second and she'll check out of the game. In comes Cameron Taylor for the first time tonight. Taylor is second on the team with 10.7 points per game thus far. And Pulliam, a little bit of contact there. Shot doesn't go, but she'll get a couple shots at the free throw line. And Megan Duffy really telling her team on the court, just relax a little bit there. It wasn't, a, that wasn't needed a foul there, leading Pulliam to go to the line and just get the points that Mar Northwestern really needs to build this lead up more. And Pulliam misses the first free throw. So the team's leading scorer this season, well, very early on, I should say, in this season. Made Still scoreless. Made 145 free throws last year for the Wildcats. And there is free throw number one of the night for her, and she is on the board with her first point of the day. And Marquette really has done a great job stopping her on the offensive side for tonight. Northwestern employing a trap defense. Marquette is still able to get across half court, though. Lubo. King having a hard time holding on to it, just av barely avoids the turnover. Van Kluden, shot clock expiring off the mark. Easy rebound right into the arms of Abby Wolf. That was a rush shot there for Van Kluden. She just wasn't able to settle down there. And Pulliam shot off the mark, but maybe a little rush. Pingola with the board. Pingola down to Taylor. Taylor in the post, and she is with her first points of the day. And, that, and all of a sudden, this is looking a little close, John. Yeah, and you know, leading to a good timeout here for Marquette to see from Northwestern, John. And you know, Cameron Taylor really got to be big presence in the post. She just showed why she was on the AP first team as a junior and senior in high school. She was ranked number 28 at her position in the country coming into this year in the, you know, in the rankings for recruiting. So yeah. And we will send it back over to Amy Galchewski on the sideline. Amy, what do you have for us? You name it. And this year, I think that redshirt junior Lauren Van Coon has really stepped up. Last game, she scored 14 points, and tonight she already has four points, and she's making some awesome defensive plays. So she's definitely someone that you want to keep your eye on for the rest of this game. Back to you, John. What a great job by Marquette without Selena Lott really hanging in here against a good Big Ten team. Yeah, you really, we didn't really know what to expect from Marquette coming into tonight against Northwestern. When you don't have your, your leading scorer of the season, Selena Lott, in the starting lineup, she's not playing today, as we said in the opening, with an undisclosed injury. But when you don't have her, she's not able to be, the, be that feeder on the offense and get there on those open three-point shots that have been so helpful for the offense for Marquette this season this season. And I think this really speaks a lot for the team down the road. The fact that they can go against one of the higher caliber teams. And 
really go without their top player. Yeah, I think it's a great test to the depth of this team that Megan Duffy has on her staff and on our team, rather, and see how much they've grown as the freshman class. The, this team is very underclassman heavy, so seeing got a lot of players who haven't seen a lot of time get those minutes means a, it's, a, it's a big step for this team in the right direction. And John, what do you think Marquette needs to do to slow down Wolf? She just seems to be on a roll today. Yeah, she's been on a roll, and I think what hurts them the most is they don't have a they don't have a player that is as tall as Wolf. Wolf is, is a six four forward who really doesn't have to get in the air to get those shots into the basket. She really just has to put her arms up for that, and then she just a big presence under the basket to get those rebounds. It, it's a tough test. I think they've done a, a good enough job so far. If they're just, you just have to hope when they come into the second half now that Wolf is slowed down a little bit and cooled off because of that halftime stop. And you have to think that maybe the strategy is keep Wolf running, maybe wear her out. Yeah, and I think they've done a good job with eliminating Julio from the offense for Northwestern. Now it's just a matter of time of them stopping Wolf. And Northwestern. Back with the ball, more than two minutes without a field goal. And a little bit longer after Sydney Woods miss. And now Pulliam, you were just mentioning her, now she has the ball. Scheid finds Wolf. Wolf against Taylor. No good, Taylor with the rebound. And now Lubo takes the ball across. King. Evaluating her options. Ball poked away, she recovers quickly though. Lubo, Van Kunin double teamed. Gotta get she out just gets that one away. Lubo, not much time left. Three seconds to shoot, air ball, and right into the hands of who else but Abby Wolf. Yeah, and this is something that Marquette is gonna have to fix on offense going into the second half that they've had so many times throughout this first half where they've gotten down to the last few seconds on the shot clock and it's been rushing the offense a little bit, not able to get those good looks to get the shots into the basket. And that's why they're down by three points, but they're keeping themselves in the game because of their defense. And a 20 to 13 rebounding advantage for the Wildcats. Burden. Screen by Wolf. Wolf wide open in the post. Instead taking an open Shide and Shide hits the three. 21-15 breaks a drought of more than three minutes without a field goal for the Wildcats. Yeah, you're gonna have Shide who's really aggressive from the three-point line. She's not gonna keep that, she's not gonna let that down and throughout this rest of the game. 350 left in the half. Northwestern with a 21-15 lead. Van Kloonen passed it to Lubo. Lubo tried to find Spingola. Looks like it went off a Northwestern player. Spingola giving a little bit of wisdom. And I think Lubo as a unexperienced player who hasn't really seen a lot of college time because she is a freshman. She feels a little bit rushed right now, so that's what Izzy's probably saying. Just relax a little bit. And Lubo pretty much passed that one right to us. Yeah. I think I, I could make a shot from, from our from press row. Really? Yeah. Well, stay tuned post game because <laughs> we will have the John Wayuzi shooting contest where we will have a live shot of him trying to hit a three while sitting down at midcourt. Sitting down might be tough. I, I was thinking I was going to be standing, but. Oh, yeah, we'll let you stand. Yeah. Shied against Murata. Pulliam, she's had a quiet day and that day gets a little quieter there, an air ball, visibly frustrated. 0 for 6 from the field goal, and her only point is coming off that one free throw that she made. That's a, this is a good job by Marquette because you knew coming into here, she, out of the 36 games last year for Northwestern, 34 of those, she had double digit points. So that was something that Megan Duffy probably really wanted to get going in a practice to stop this week. And now Spingola, 10 seconds to shoot. She drives. Sends to Murata. Murata working the post, and it looked like Abby Wolf reached into the cookie jar. And that's her first foul of the day. 
Marquette not quite in the bonus though. King inbounds it. Almost right to Sydney Wood. Nice job by Cameron Taylor to recover that one. King back to Taylor and another foul on Wolf. She reaches in again. And now if you're Marquette, you see Wolf is reaching in all these past two times. If you get her into more foul trouble, McEwen's gonna have to take her out of the game. And that is the number one thing Marquette is really gonna want to happen. Because without Wolf on the court, you're not gonna have a big rebounding person for Northwestern. You're not gonna have a person who they can feed to just put the ball up in the hand. And Cameron Taylor. First free throw off the mark for the six foot two freshman forward from Peoria, Illinois. And second free throw also off the mark. And out bounds Northwestern ball. Yeah, now this makes Marquette, after Taylor's two tries at the line, two for six from the line. And those four points could be could have been big four points for Marquette. And now Burden taking the ball up again. Nice screen by Wolf. And right there, Sydney Wood just trying to do it all herself. Doesn't quite work. Ball goes out of bounds. Dead ball rebound for the Golden Eagles. And now you have Wolf checking out of the game. That's that's big for Marquette and within the last two minutes, two and a half minutes. Northwestern has missed six of their last seven shots, but not like Marquette's doing much better. More than three minutes without a point. Van Clunen off the mark, missing from way up close. Shy blocked that in the last second. Screen by Scheid. I think a few fans were hoping for a moving block. A moving pick, no whistle, and now it's going to go on the other side. Trap defense. She's looking for somebody, and they're asking offensive foul on Stingola. And now she has two fouls. Now you're going to probably have Kaifis checking in for Stingola. That did not take long there. No. So now Spingola in foul trouble and on the bench for Marquette. This will move King back to the wing. And Abby Wolf on the bench for Northwestern. How will each team adapt? Scheid finds Pulliam. Pulliam double teamed in the post. No problem for her. She gets the bucket to go after starting out the game over six. And now it's 23-15 Northwestern. Kaifas finds King, one freshman to another. King against Scheid. She tried to pass that one out. Three Wildcat defenders in the area said, hey, not so fast. Seventh turnover by the Golden Eagles in the first half. And meanwhile, at the post, Courtney Shaw can't get the shot to go, but she does draw contact. So she'll shoot two with 102 to go, and now Chloe Murata has her second foul. And that's something that Megan Duffy is really going to think going into the second half. See how we're going to manage the time because Spignola has is in foul trouble. Morata's in foul trouble. You really can't afford to have Van Cluden get into foul trouble now. And Shaw's first free throw off the mark. Shaw, a six-foot sophomore forward from Perry Hall, Maryland. And the sophomore misses both. A gift for the Golden Eagles. Trap defense on King. She tries to get Murata. Burden jumps in and she gets the easy layup to go. 25-15. And Megan Duffy has seen enough and will take a timeout. 51 seconds left to go in the half. Yeah, you have to call a timeout here if you're Megan Duffy. This team just doesn't look like themselves if you got the first half, John. And the, within that last two minutes or so, the defense hasn't been what it's been in that first half. And the offense, I don't know how much you could say, they haven't really scored within the last four and a half minutes. So they're really not doing much on there. And 
you got to relax a little bit if you're Marquette because this game is going to get out, out of hand a little bit. They're now down by 10, the biggest lead for Northwestern of the half. And you have to think Marquette will try to get some type of quick push here before halftime. You would not like to go into the locker room down double digits. No, you wouldn't. And, and, you know, that's something that they're going to have to figure out here in the last 51 minutes. 51 Davis. seconds, sorry. She had trouble against the double team. She gets it to Lubo. Lubo right around the Al logo, not far from us. Loses her handle, recovers though. King to Murata. Murata just barely holds on to the ball. She finds Van Cloonen. Van Cloonen, easy bucket, 25-17. Good job by Van Cloonen in the post to use her body to her advantage to get the ball off the board into the basket. And now Burden, looking like Northwestern is now hold for the final shot. 10 seconds to go. Wood finds Pulliam. Wouldn't be surprised if she takes a shot. No, she kicks it out to corner three. Off the mark, Chloe Murata with the rebound. And Marquette will go into halftime. Down 25-17. Not so bad without your leading scorer, John. No, it isn't. And I think the biggest thing for we have to look at for Marquette in the second half is how do they get the offense going? They're 7 for 24 from the field goal. That's a 29.2 percentage. 1 for 6 from the arc. 2 for 6 from the from the from the free throw line. And defense has to clean up a little bit, especially when Wolf is not on the court. And you know, it's been a big deal to get. Wolf in foul trouble. Do you see that continuing in the second half? You have to get her into foul trouble because without her on, on the court, you take a big challenge for Marquette on the defensive side. Any other key points that you think Marquette needs to emphasize at halftime? No, just relax a little bit. They're in this game right now. It's a close game. You come in and let's start going. They have to get going in the second half. And we will take a short break here at the Al McGuire Center, but don't go anywhere. Don't close your internet browser tab we will be back shortly for more big east big 10 basketball sometimes the things we do can make others feel hurt excluded or isolated everything you say and do creates an impact how am i supposed to save the whole world you can't think about saving the world you have to think about saving one person because of you someone's entire life can change you don't have to be a superhero to have a positive impact friends friends Get ready for the day, buddy. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Do we have a gun? What's up? Do we have a gun? So I just moved in with this family and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. <laughs> I surrender, I surrender. All right, pal. Get ready for the day, buddy. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Do we have a gun? What's up? Do we have a gun? Why I'm never gonna let you go Never gonna 
you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I surrender. I surrender. All right, pal. Get ready for the day, buddy. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. We have a gun. What's up? We have a gun. Gotcha. <laughs> I surrender, I surrender. All right, pal. Get ready for the day, buddy. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. We have a gun. What's up? We have a gun.
are back here at the Al McGuire Center. Thanks for keeping your internet browser tab open, whether you're a Chrome person or a Firefox person <laughs> or a Safari person. Well, you, we, can have, you can have Chrome on Mac. Yes, I, I do have Chrome. Well, I'm saying you can have Mac. You can have that a is Chrome true. on a Mac like me. Yes, you yeah, could. Yeah. Yeah. So we are, regardless of the yeah. internet browser, <laughs> we are back live. Yes, we are. With about three and a half minutes until the second half. John, what does the Marquette cast, what do they have to do? in the second half. All right, let me break this down a little bit for you here, John. Marquette men's basketball is in the Al McGuire Center. Now, for all of our, listen, our lawyer listeners and viewers, if you listened into la last night's broadcast for men's basketball against Purdue with Dan Abington and Matt Yazel, you saw a big second half from Marquette. And this is what this women's basketball team is going to have to do today. Relax a little bit on the offensive side. Don't rush it on the shots. Just have a nice, easy, relaxed shot. Find your open passes. You Use that IQ that got you here to play Division One, and take advantage of what Northwestern is giving to you. For example, Wolf is in foul trouble. Use that to your advantage here to start the second half because when you don't have her on the court, you lose a 6-4 defender on defense who's going to be going for those offensive rebounds and to put the, or put the ball back into the basket with just her hand. So that is my biggest thing that Marquette has to do in the second half if they want to come out with a big, stepping, big, word win. I, I, I lost my train of thought there, but a it's going to be a win. big statement when that's it, that's it. Well, it's funny you used the game yesterday with men's basketball against Purdue as a comparison, because you can draw quite a few parallels Correct. here. You have a dominant post player. Yesterday it was Matt Harms. Today it's Abby Wolf. Yeah. That Marquette really needs to do a better job of slowing down. They do, and Wolf has been the, the biggest struggle on offense on defense rather for Marquette she has all she has mostly all the points she has 10 out of the 25 points for Northwestern and everything has been coming from under the basket and yes Marquette doesn't have as, as tall of a player to go against her but they got players like Chloe Murata and Laurie, Lauren Van Clunen and Altia Anderson who have done a good enough job so far in that from the first half to stop Wolf at times but they just have to get in the post a little bit more show a little bit more aggressive atmosphere underneath the basket and I think they'll be fine on that but they've done a great job stopping Lindsay Pulliam. Yes agreed you look at it three points on one for seven shooting if you would have told me that was me or first half stat line I would not think that the score was 25-17 Northwestern. I'd expect Marquette to be winning. Yeah I you know coming a player that was the leading scorer for this Northwestern team against Loyola Maryland on Sunday in 32 minutes scored 25 points she's coming off a season where she led the team in point, in average points, 16 and a half and attempts, and three throws, and three free throws made, and in the Big e, the Big Ten itself, she was third in total points with 599 points. So that's, that's a, a star, star player, that's, right that's there. That's a star player. She's played for Team USA. She was a she was the ranked the number 60th uh, recruit in her class in 2017. She's all Big E's, all Big Ten first team. So this is a player that Marquette needed to stop to come into tonight's game here in the Al McGuire Center. They did that, but they also have to stop Wolf, her partner in crime. And you have to think stopping her partner in crime, Wolf, is going to be a little harder with the amount of foul trouble that Marquette's been in. For sure, and you have Chloe Murata with two fouls. Uh, Izzy Spignola has uh, two fouls of her own. You have King with one foul. So this Marquette team, they're in foul trouble for the first time of the season, so it's going to be interesting to, have to see how Megan Delphi handles the fouls because you know you're not going to have you already don't have Selena a lot on the court so you really have to figure out that next person mentality coming off the bench for Megan Duffy and her staff and what have you seen from Lubo as that next person up starting in places so we know why. Yeah, Lubo has looked a little rushed at times from that first half, but she is that point guard who runs the offense and puts Jordan King, a freshman, into the wing position, something that she is very comfortable playing. And we were just talking about Pulliam, how quiet of a first half she had. She gets the second half started right away with the pocket.
Jordan King finds Izzy Spingola, three and one. And that is what Marquette has to do. They got to get feed the ball to Spinola, who's good on the from the three from the arc to get the three shot, to get the three points, but also draw the foul to make it a four four run play. And Coach McEwen did not look like he liked that one. Wait, they're not making that a free throw? I thought it was a shooting foul. That's what it yeah looked like at first. That is very interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that from basketball alone. So it looks like the foul was after the shooting motion. So it's All right, a so three. that's why it's leading to and a And then foul. on the rebound, okay. there's the foul Marquette ball. So this could turn out to be even more than a. Yeah, make it a six run play. It's like a little bit of confusion there. But it's a good sign to, for the offense for Marquette to start the second half with getting a basket of their own. They're on their first offensive drive, and it looks like the officials are discussing the play itself right now. And if the current ruling stands, which it appears to be, you know, you're going to catch some breaks. Yeah. And the key thing when you're down, you got to take advantage of them. And, and McEwen's trying to get an explanation, but the ref walked away. And we are back after a rather long break. And Spingola, can she get another three on this possession? No, she cannot. Sydney Wood with the rebound. Luba almost had that offensive rebound. Good fight there from the freshman underneath the basket. Pulliam defended by Jordan King. What a job by Jordan King on defense against her. She's been a freshman. big defensive presence throughout the season for this Golden Eagles team. And Wolf shot off the mark, fight for the rebound. That's off Northwestern player. Looked like that was against or off Veronica Burden. Selby Marquette ball. Marquette gets past the full court pressure. Spingola three off the mark, but Jordan King gets the rebound. Van Clunen open mid-range shot off the mark. And it looked like another offensive rebound, but looked like a foot on the line. And as a result, will be Northwestern ball. What I liked there was that Jordan King jumped for the offensive rebound and found Lauren Van Clunen open behind her. King just didn't go up for the shot. She saw her own player open who allowed her to get a better eye and a better look on the ball. And Wolf finds Burden. Burden working down the baseline against Bingolo. Shot off the mark. Out of bounds, Marquette ball. And that's a good job by Marquette to not give the ball into the hands of Wolf. She was fighting for that there, John, but Marquette got the ball back. More of this about three-quarter court pressure from the Wildcats. King against Scheid. Bingola, can she get another three? No, she steps in, shot right here on the top of the key, off the mark, Van Clunen with the offensive board. Hit pass from Van Clunen, Spingola just holds on to it. And a traveling though for Lubo. And that'll be Northwestern ball again. Yeah, you can't afford to have those travels or easy turnovers, but that was a good fight there by Spignola to fight for the ball, to put the ball back and still hold it on the Marquette side, on the offensive side of the court. Marquette has missed their last four field goals. Shide screen. And now down low, it's Wolf again. But her pass intercepted by Lauren Van Clunen. Great job by Lubo to block Wolf there, who wanted to go up, but she just used her entire body to stop Wolf. And Murata against Wolf and Scheid. She finds an open Jordan King. King three off the mark. It's the front of the rim, and now a fast break opportunity. Sydney Wood against Izzy Spingola. Offensive foul. And that is a great job by Jordan King just to keep ground get the offensive foul to put the ball back in the hands of the Golden Eagles. And you look on the court right now, the Northeast Philadelphia native himself, McQuiggan, McEwen rather, is not looking happy. John, as I had to give the reference to yourself, 
I knew you had to get that reference hey, in today. He played in the conference that I used to broadcast for, the Philadelphia Catholic League. Father Judge and Philadelphia Catholic League Hall of Fame there for basketball, John. Ball back at Milwaukee. It's Van Clunen against Wolf. Out to Spingola. Spingola three is good. She does it again. Third tray of the day. That's a good job by Izzy to find the players to find Izzy with the open three, and if they can keep on feeding to her when she's hot from the three, Marquette can get themselves in this game quickly. And Spingola got her leg in the way of that pass, pick ball violation, and he'll stay on this side of the court. Inbound play to Pulliam. She doesn't have anything, has to pass it out. They seem to keep on be giving her the ball, just no opportunities though. Screen by Wolf. And now Sydney Wood with a little bit of space, finds Pulliam, Pulliam as the shot clock expires is good, but did it get off? I don't think in so. In time before the shot clock? I don't think so. Certainly looked close. I don't think it got out there in time. They're definitely gonna go to the monitor here, but if I was, if I, from my perspective, from the, 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 the three point, the shot was just made right in front of my eyes here to my left. I think the ball was still in the hands of Julian when the buzzer went off. Well, we will see soon enough. Our first official review of the day. First official review of the season. And you know, this could be a pretty big swing of things depending on how everything goes. You know, if this three stands, it's a 30 to 23 game. Northwestern kind of keeping that seven to 10 point lead that they've been building throughout the day. If it doesn't stand, it's a four point game. Marquette can make it a one possession game and, right here. And he said, and the official said it did not go off the hands of Pulliam, which makes it still a 6-0 run for Marquette within the last three minutes and 13 seconds. And that is the exact start Megan Duffy's team had to do to start the second half when they were down by a big margin. Now they're only down by four. They're finding themselves in a much comfortable uh, deficit right now. And you really look at the last 3.30 for Marquette defensively, that tells it all. Yeah. No Northwestern scoring in that run. Three turnovers. It's huge. That is a huge stat right there. Marquette went into halftime saying, let's take something out of Northwestern's playbook of just double teaming. That's what Marquette has changed on defense. I think that's really helped them in their favor. And Van Koonen looking for Jordan King, it looks like. Eventually gets it to her. 10 seconds to shoot. King. Now she's called for the offensive foul. Looks like maybe a little bit of a push off. I'm not really sure if that was a foul there, but that's a tough foul there for Jordan King and Marquette. And that is King's second foul of the day. So not quite foul trouble. It's about 5.50 to go in the third quarter. And Pulliam, contested shot, no good. Spingola rebounds, Spingola wasting no time to get the ball up. And now King, Van Clunen. Van Clunen finds a little bit of space. She puts a little too much on that one, intended for Lubo. Lubo just couldn't get her hand on it. Yeah, it was a good attempt there by Lubo to try to keep the ball in bounds, but when the fastball comes in a little bit too fast, the catcher can't hold it all the time. A little bit of a wild pitch. Indeed. Not a pass ball in that one. No. Wolf going up against two or three Marquette defenders and Lubo comes up with it. Lubo finds Anderson. Anderson fast break layup is good. That's a great job there by Lubo to find Anderson down the court. Open lane there and a good job by Anderson not to rush it to the basket. Take her time and get the basket. Marquette only down by two. And now you're starting to hear the crowd get into it a little bit. It's only a two point game all of a sudden. An 8-0 run. And if Marquette can take something out of another team here at the Alma, who plays in the Al McGuire Center, that is the women's volleyball team. When this Al McGuire Center is rowdy, they, they take it to their advantage and they play their best. Burden, fast break, defended by Spingola. Not really much 
that the senior from Whitney Young in Chicago could do. Ends an 8-0 run by Marquette. Meanwhile, five turnovers in the last 514 for Northwestern. And that will bring us to the third quarter media timeout, the under five timeout. Northwestern with a 29-25 lead. And with that, we will send it back over to Amy on the sideline. Amy, what's up? Center. As Lauren Van Cluden will take the inbound. Claire Kaifas checked in. She replaced Lugo. Meanwhile, Northwestern is still rolling with the same group they been using all quarter long. Van Cluden gets offensive rebound. Great job though by Sydney Wood to get her hands on that, forcing the jump ball. Possession arrow stays on the right side of the court. Yeah, Marquette continuing having the ball because of that possession arrow. But if you look at the stats right now, in the paint itself, Northwestern is out shooting Marquette in points 20 to 12. Quite Mar the differential Quite right the differential there. there, but also Marquette has no second chance shots into the basket. So that's something that's still got to fix also. And now Tia Anderson gets the ball. Pretty much just taken away from her. Wolf on the other end. No issues. Gets a bucket to go. 31-25. She really moved that way, her way up that court. There. For being a post player, she yeah. can really move. Yeah, she can. Kaifas looking for somebody. She finds Izzy Spingola. Spingola finds King. King. Goes right back to Spingola. Then Cluden. King open three with six seconds in the shot clock. Nothing but net. Nothing but money there from Jordan King. And you know, she really went to what Jordan, Michael Jordan does a lot. Open three, let's do it. 
Man, John, you have all the references here today. And loose ball there. And looks like it'll be a Marquette foul. Megan Duffy not, not happy with the call there from the official.
The Arctic Moose controlled the ball, just recovered that time though. And now it's Murata out to Rubo. Rubo just barely nicked the iron, but off the mark. A little too much power on the arc of that, of that shot. And now Burton against Rubo. Kicks out to Shy. Shy three, good. 36-30, 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. That is Shy's third three-pointer of the night. And she has all three, all three-pointer shots for the Wildcats. And she's had almost all the attempts, too. And now Coy Murata. Cuts that one to 36-32. Gets her first pass. Five seconds to go in the quarter. Here's Burden. Three good looks. Shot off the mark. Gingola with the rebound. And that will wrap it up for the third quarter. Remain neck and neck here at the L. Better get ready and better cook another bag of popcorn and sit back and relax because it's about to get heated in the fourth quarter here. And it's a good game. Only down by four, John. To Marquette really kept themselves in the game here in the third quarter. And, and really thanks to having a good quarter of offensive play. And this really, we've been talking a little bit about it before, but this really can the makings of a game that could go down to the final couple possessions. I really do. I do think it's really going to come down to the final possessions. It's going to come down to what team doesn't commit so many turnovers here in the fourth quarter and who doesn't give the easy fouls. Now, if you're Marquette, you want to make a wolf get the fouls so you can get her out of the game. Because when she's out off the court, it's a different defensive team that Marquette has to stop from an offensive standpoint. But they've really done a good job stopping her in the first half, uh, in this third quarter, rather. So and you, some players who you might not expect to see stop Wolf, like Jordan King, uh, has really done a good job. And you look at it, when Wolf was in foul trouble, you saw Northwestern's offense get dramatically less effective. Yeah, you do. And she's been the facilitator of getting the offensive rebound, get the defensive rebound, but also just get the ball feed it to her that she can just put her arms up and get it off the ball. Up off the, the ball and two off the board right to the basket. And also, credit to Marquette for continuing to shut down with people. Oh yeah, you gotta give a lot of credit to this Marquette team to stop the leading scorer of this Wildcats team. But you gotta give a lot of credit to the coaching of Marquette. Megan Duffy knows how to stop a point guard. She was a point guard herself at Notre Dame in the WNBA team for Team USA in the Olympic play. But you know, they've done a great job stopping William in the third quarter and the entire game so far. And you really look at it, Marquette, if you think about it, we have every reason to not be in this game. Yeah, you're without Selena Lott. You're with a team that was an incredible group of six seniors. And you're up against Northwestern team that has essentially its entire team back, minus one player. Yeah. If you look at it, to be within four points here at the beginning of the fourth it's quarter, it's great. It's not too shabby. No, it's not. And I think when you when Coach Duffy speaks after the game, I think she's going to say a lot how, how excited and how proud she was of her team fighting in the third quarter to keep this game so close. It's been an ugly quarter, an ugly game in quotations, rather, just because of how many turnovers are in this game for Marquette. They have 15 turnovers and for Northwestern, so they have 13. So you have over close to 30 turnovers combined, so that's not a good stat for either team. No. And the fourth quarter is underway, deciding a winner in the next 10 minutes. Cameron Taylor, excuse me, Altia Anderson, my bad, with a shot no good, gets the rebound, goes at it again. Oh, but no, the shot clock expired first. Yeah, it's unfortunate right there, but it was a good attempt there by Altia to get that second chance. Something that Marquette has struggled. Now, in the third quarter itself, Marquette shot 40% from the field goal, their best of the game. So their offense is definitely in the right direction. And really a night for Bellman after a slow start, kind of midway to late through the first quarter, was not a great sight. And meanwhile, Taylor Valade taking the ball up. She's in the game, and so is Izzy Spingola's three-point shot. 
when in doubt, go to Izzy. She is the, she has the hot hand from the three-point line in this one. Just keep on feeding to her. You're only down by one. And now a chance to take the lead. Altia Anderson gets it done. Don't look now, but Marquette has a 37-36 lead. And first lead of the day, and Marquette really making a statement here in the second half. And they've been really taking one out of the playbook by the Marquette men's basketball team from last night. And now you see the crowd getting into it a little bit. Just in time for Sydney Wood to get the bucket, get the lead back in the hands of the Wildcats. Debatable or not here, John, Big East, Big Ten, probably two of the best conferences to play college basketball. So it's a fun night here now. And Spingola three is good. Marquette and Izzy Spingola. Man, oh man. Marquette can do this. Yeah, if, you look, if you're Northwestern right now, you have to stop Izzy Spignola. Five three-pointers in the second half for the senior out of Chicago. And she's been the big difference maker of this Marquette offense. They're able to feed to her when they need it. She's able to get those open reads, relax on her shot. She doesn't have to rush them. And they go in and they score at this push like easy money. And man, when Izzy Spignola is hitting these shots, there's not really much in the cover. Yeah, there really isn't it. This Northwestern defense isn't, hasn't been impressive in my way compared to what they need, like, showed in the first half. They're stepping back a little bit. I'm not sure why, but the market has taken that to their advantage, and that is the exact approach for Megan Duffy and her team. And it's been going with a game high 15 points. I mean, she can hit the three. We've been talking about all day with her five three-pointers. Also, how about her down low? Leading Marquette with six rebounds. Yeah, they, they, that's big. And when you don't have Chloe Marana, who's really been the big rebounder for this Marquette team throughout the season. Excuse me. Coming into today, she averaged 10 rebounds a game. She only has three so far today. So Spinola not only stepping up on the offensive, getting the points from the three-point line, but getting the rebounds. That's a big thing. That's what you need from your senior player in a big game against a big conference opponent in like Northwestern. And if this is not veteran leadership, I don't know what it is. Yeah, and I think she's done a great job. And this is something that Megan Duffy was excited to have a senior come back with such experience like Izzy. And she's able to step up in big moments when the inexperienced underclassmen that really we've seen a lot from this year. And we've seen a lot good from them here tonight against Northwestern. But Izzy's really stepped up and kept this team in it and kept these guys and kept her teammates fighting to the very last minute. And also, how about Cole's leadership? You've been seeing her with a very impressive stat line, but you're also seeing her between plays giving tips to younger players. And that's actually a very freshman heavy team. And that is the best way for these freshman players to learn. And talking from Media Day with Jordan King and Taylor Valaday, two, two freshmen who are really looking to get that point guard position to own for themselves that starting point guard position. Because you don't have Danielle King on this team now for Marquette coming into the year. But that they said that is the best way they have been able to learn the college offense, but not all, but also the Megan Duffy offense. They, by having seniors and upperclassmen have confidence in them and say, okay, this is what you need to do, let's fix this up. You're doing a good job, let's get this up a notch because we know how much depth and how much potential we have on this team. And believe it or not, I, really, I really believe it. This Marquette team has shown promise throughout the year and they're gonna prove the Big East wrong this year. And how much confidence does this give a 3-0 start and now to be in it here? It's a good Northwestern team. Yeah, it gives a lot of confidence. And if, they can, if Marquette can draw a win out of here to go 4-0 on the season and have this win to their advantage, not only is it going to help them in the rankings, but it's also going to help them in the confidence saying, okay, we played a really good opponent in Northwestern. We were able to fight to the very last minute, able to go shot for shot, basket for basket, rebound for rebound, and get a win. We're a pretty good basketball team. That's a big confidence and motivation booster. And Shide hits the first free throw. So Marquette's looted down to one. And down to none. 40, 40, 8, 12 left. If you guys don't have the popcorn going yet, hurry up. Might have to get another, another uh, bag in the microwave. 
And Singola, another three. She just can't miss today. When in doubt, Fred Butter, three-pointer, Izzy Stringola. And she is single-handedly bringing Marquette back in this one. Although, right there, Lindsey Pulliam gets past her. You can't afford to have Pulliam get going here on the fourth quarter if you're Marquette. 43, 42, 7.38 to go. Spingola finds Altia Anderson. Anderson. Now it's been a three second violation. Warren Van Cleveland camped a little too long down there. And that is turnover number 17 for the Golden Eagles, fourth on Warren Van Cleveland tonight. And something that we're going to have to clean up, especially when they have to still play Mississippi State in two weeks. You cannot make those types of mistakes that often when you get to a team like Mississippi State. Meanwhile, here's Wolf against Anderson, gets the bucket to go, 44-43. Now then, seeing significant time in this quarter, and that's a turnover number 18. Northwestern, can they take advantage? Burden against Valade. She takes out the shine, gives it right back to her. No, you can have the ball. No, you can. I was playing hot potato. Yeah. Only a seven seconds to shoot. Screen by Wall. Defense by Lubo. And Pulliam gets past Lubo, draws the contact, can't quite get the bucket to fall, but Joel heads the journey strike. And that's the best op best scenario to come out of that foul for Marquette. The only leading the potential two points instead of three points there from Pulliam. So he could only be down by, let's say, for Marquette, only by, down by a three-pointer. And when Izzy's hot right now, might as well just go to her for that to get to high game. But you still got to see what Pulliam does from the free throw line right here. But I think Marquette is still going to need somebody else for to step sure. up for Marquette. For sure. Man, it can't just be the yeah. Izzy Spingola or shoot from corner three. No, I think mean, you got to go. You have Jordy King out there. You got Altia. You got Lauren Van Cleenan. Uh, three potential big scorers for this Marquette women's basketball team. And Spingola leading the Golden Eagles with 18. The next highest player is Van Cleenan with eight. And Van Cleenan. Speaking of which, passes it to Spingola. Almost like they're hearing our broadcast. Anderson out to Kaifas. Only speaking wisdom here, John. Only speaking wisdom. Spingola, screened by Van Cloonen. Out to Van Cloonen. Van Cloonen mid-range jumper. Three seconds on the shot clock. Not an issue for the redshirt junior from Mason, Ohio. No, that's a great job there by Van Cloonen. That's really been, she's been doing so great tonight. And in this game, not only this game here tonight against Northwestern, but against Illinois State this past Sunday. And Burden. Northwestern trying to get something going offensively. They've been better this quarter. Three consecutive makes. Can Poya make it four? No, Van Cloonen with the rebound. Van Cloonen with her fifth rebound excuse me, fourth rebound of the night. 5.20 to go. Dan Kuhn to King. King tried to thread the needle of Altia Anderson. Very tight window though, doesn't quite get it. But out of bounds mark at all. But fortunately it went off a Northwestern player who wasn't able to get her hands on the ball so quickly to lead the ball and still on Marquette. Meanwhile, substitution, Troy Murata checks in, or by the way, quickly, five seconds, three seconds to shoot. Murata right at the hoop, reverse the layup goes, 47-46, five minutes to go. It's gonna be a back and forth game, game job there by Murata to go to the post underneath the basket for the reverse layup. And now other side, it's Wolf ball, poked away by Jordan King, and Jordan King draws the foul on Wolf. That's her third. I don't know if you could have had a better sequence of events in a four second span than that. Really couldn't there. Nice. We're gonna lead into immediate timeout here, but that's a great job there by Jordy King to draw the foul so quickly on Wolf, because now you put her in three fouls, she's only two away from being fouled out of this game, and that's what he 
exactly what Marquette needs to happen. And you look at it, Marquette's in this game, 450 to go, a one point game. Can't really get much better. No, you can't. This is game's gonna come down to the very last minute like we've been talking about throughout this entire broadcast. And with that, we'll send it over to our sideline reporter, Amy Galchesky. facing a Big East opponent, you know this is really going to come down to these kind of games. To the very last minute, the team that makes the last shot, does the, everything, the little things right, will become the winner of this game. Would you say that this might be the most competitive non-conference game Mark I don't have? I think so. I think we're, we still have to see them play Mississippi State, a team that will bring a lot of challenges to a young team. But this is the real first test for Marquette throughout the season. Not, I'm not saying anything bad about the opponents they faced, like Morgan State, St. Francis, Brooklyn, and Illinois State, three teams that Marquette has won and seen some struggles in. But this is a big test for Marquette here tonight. They can get a win, a big statement win for Marquette, but they still have 450 left. They got to do everything. They got to do the little things right, and they got to keep on feeding the ball in the right way. And we'll be, they'll be able to find a big win. And going in, this game was to be a barometer of okay, how quickly will this rebuild in the Megan Duffy era go? Sure. This is probably their first real competitive opponent, as you're saying. Yes. Right now, you have to feel pretty good about how the rebuild is going when you're competing against a team that was 500 in the Big Ten and are turning almost everybody this year. For sure, and when you're, you got to give a lot of credit to Megan Duffy and her coaching staff for them, for them preparing this team through the last three days and through all the video, all the scout uh, runs, and all they prepared themselves in a very good position and for them to keep this game. They're up by one, but this is going to be a fight to the end. And Lubo, Spingola. Plenty of freshmen on the floor. I should say plenty of underclassmen. Van Kooten shot off the mark. Three out of the five players on the floor are underclassmen. And this is crunch time right here. Yeah, it really is. It's a big test for these underclassmen just to get the experience in the minutes. And King maybe a little too aggressive on that. Her third foul. Oh, excuse me, her fourth foul. So she will have to be careful. The last thing that Marquette needs is no Jordan King. Yeah, and they can't afford to have that. She's the facilitator of the offense right now. And burden down low to Pulliam. Pulliam against Bingola. Shot off the mark. King and Murata team up for that rebound. I'm really impressed to see the defense uh, stance that Jordan King has brought tonight. She's going against Wolf. She's going against some of rebounds. She's done a really good job with the steals also. And nice dish to Murata. She finds Van Kooten. Van Kooten gets the job done. Marquette with a three-point lead. And that is a great read there by Chloe to find Lauren underneath the basket where Wolf looked a little lost, so she used that to her advantage. Lauren went into the post, something that she's been working on a lot in offseason and through the last week or so. Burden, yeah. drive against. Lubo draws the contact. She'll head to the line. So that's her second foul, fourth team foul. Northwestern in a scoring drought within the last two minutes and 54 seconds. And that's a great stat for the Marquette defense that really has been stepping up in the second half. And in that time, a 6-0 Marquette run. 
first free throw is good. The band free throw distractions do not work this time. 49-47, 3.36 to go. Second free throw is good. One point game. Full court pressure from the Wildcats. Not phasing the freshman, Darrell Lubo though. Jordan King, screened by Van Cloonen. She's looking for somebody. It's in the hot hands of Izzy Spingoa, who has not been missing much. She finds King, King three off the mark, long rebound right into the hands I like of that. Abby Scheid. I like that aggressive shot there from King. Not afraid to shoot the ball. And Burden goes the hoop, lots of contact. She'll head to the line shooting two. Marquette cannot afford to have that happen within the last three minutes. They're just giving points away now to Northwestern and they can, they're now in the bonus Northwestern so they're going to be shooting for the rest of this game. And that was the third foul for Altia Anderson. First free throw good. Nothing but net. And the small contingent that drove up from Evanston shows their appreciation. Second free throw off the mark Altia Anderson with the rebound. Now to the rejoice of the Marquette fan. Not a bad drive to get up to this game. Battle of I-94 here tonight in Milwaukee. And King finds Bingoa. Tight defense by Burden. But then Anderson finds Van Cloonen. Van Cloonen, she's getting the job done this quarter. She hits it again. She's up to 14 points on the day. And Marquette has a two-point lead again. Yeah, and she's been a big presence and something that Marquette has needed in the past two games. She's just living everything opportunity she has. Pulliam, tough shot. Does not get it to go. Altia Anderson gets the rebound. Tight space to work with. And that's going to be Marquette ball. Not so wow. certain for a while there. Yeah. And Sydney Wood is not thrilled with that one either. McEwen not happy with that call there from the official. 2.16 to go. Bubo, pretty much right in front of us, passes it to Van Cloonen. Van Cloonen to Bubo. Try to get something going offensively. Anderson, looks like a little bit of contact. Northwestern defender poked their way in. And that will be a foul. Burden picks up her second. But Marquette not quite in the bonus. Only the second team foul of the quarter for Northwestern. And Lubo just looking for somebody. She finds Jordan, excuse me, Jordan King. After about four and a half seconds of the five allotted seconds, King finds Anderson. Anderson working the post, gets out to Spingola. Spingola, King. Can King do something? Two seconds on the shot clock, no good. Rebound, jump ball. And the possession arrow will send that back over to Wildcats. That's a good fight. A, a tenacious effort right yeah, there. Yeah, for sure. And Marquette trying to move the ball around because the defense is coming back on them from Northwestern. They were just trying to find an open lane there for a shot. King thought she had enough on that on the arc of that shot, but just not enough. And now crunch time here. If there ever was crunch time. 125 to go. Pulliam finds Scheid. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Burden three off the mark. Altia Anderson with another rebound. Her eighth of the afternoon, well I should say of the evening. She's been a big help on the off, the rebounding team, something that she needed. And now with 105 to go, 
Coach Duffy talking this one over. I think what she's just saying here is relax. We're in the moment right now. Don't get your emotions to you so quickly. We still have only a two point lead. It's not like we're up by 10 right now. So you gotta relax a little bit. Stay true to yourself. Don't let the atmosphere get into you. Play the Marquette way. Play the way we've been playing throughout the entire season and work that to your advantage. And you know, one of the first things that we were saying was how this would be a big test for the Golden Eagles. Yes. When I said that, I didn't think that this would be a two-point game no. with 105 to go. I don't think anybody had thought that it was going to be this close of a game. They might have thought it was within four or six points, but having it a two-point game within the last minute and five seconds to go, and it's going to come down to the very last second like we've been talking about throughout here, but this is a great showing from a young Marquette team, regardless of how the outcome comes tonight. And John, put on your coach when you use the cap on. What do you see Marquette doing? Marquette has to feed the ball to Lauren Van Clunen in the post. It's been working throughout the entire quarter. And it looks like Northwestern's now foul. Will at least get closer to being in the bonus. Only their third team foul, so they've got a little more work to do. And another Marquette inbound. Can't afford to have turnovers here in the, in the last minute for Marquette. Lubo finds Van Koonen, not fouling this time. And 57 seconds to go. Pass tipped, Van Koonen fighting for it with Burden. Loose ball, they're gonna say jump ball. Marquette could not call a timeout, but possession arrow remains with the Golden Eagles. So they will have six seconds to get a shot off. That's gonna be, it's gonna be tough right here for Marquette. They're on the other side of the court right now. They thought they were gonna try to look for a timeout, but, and now it will be Lubo taking the inbound about four feet in front of us. Gotta throw a Hail Mary here. She finds Anderson, four to shoot. She's gotta get something up. She loses control of it, and what a gift right there. Christmas came early. Northwestern turns the ball over on an irresponsible pass. And now with 32 seconds left, Marquette at the two point lead. Marquette can run down the clock to about 15 seconds, but no, it's a traveling how violation. Is, how is that a travel? She literally got tripped by a Northwestern player. Now you're, this is a smart timeout here by Northwestern. You got the ball on the other side of the court right now. They'll have the ball on their side, make a shot. They're only down by two. They can win by, they can get in the lead with a three-pointer, but now you're Marquette. You really need to bring that double coverage defense onto, Mar onto Northwestern. Can't afford to get the ball into the hands of Pulliam, Wolf, Vernon. You can't, or you can't afford to get the ball into the hands of their top players here. Shai uh, is 11 points, Wolf has 14, Vernon has seven, Pulliam has nine, eight in the, first, in the second half. So you can't afford to give it to the top players for this Northwestern team. That's a tough task there, John, but that is. It, for Marquette, you gotta, give, you gotta play your best defense here because you don't have a shot clock. And this is where Jordan King has been making defensive yes. plays. Yes, that you'd expect from a junior or a senior all game long. She's gonna have another chance with pretty high stakes here. 26.4 seconds left. The shot clock is off. Can't afford to give a foul here either. A foul ties the game, but it's gonna make it tough rush on or the an and one would get yes, Northwestern in the lead. Correct. That's the last thing. Yes. You can't have a three and you can't have a foul. Yep. This is gonna be the longest 25 seconds of Marquette's season so far. Who do you see Coach McEwen giving the ball to? Wolf, uh, it, has to go, it has to go to her. It's been a big challenge for Marquette throughout the game. And it'll be burdened to start out. 23 seconds to go. Crowd getting into this one. Screen by Wolf. Scheid gets it down to Wolf by a great tip by Altia Anderson. 10.5 seconds left, out of bounds, still Northwestern ball. Great job there, and you saw that Scheid was going to Wolf. Now, now he's gonna call another timeout. Call another timeout. 
to, to try to draw up a new play. That first play didn't work there as Altia was able to get her hands for the tip. Now Duffy sees what Northwestern was trying to do on the court, so now they can adapt to that. This was the best scenario for Marquette to come out of that last 26.4 seconds. And what a chess match this yeah, is. Yeah, it is. This is the type of game that players dream of being. Yeah, and this is a big non-conference game early on in the season for Marquette. And regardless of what happens, this is going to be a great teaching moment for this young Golden Eagles team. And what a play also by Altia Anderson. For sure, for sure. on that. Yeah, she's been a, she's had a big second half here on the offensive rebound, get the steals and a big block right there. And here it is. The inbound to Pulliam. Burden, again, Spingola gets the layup to go. 4.6 seconds left, immediately a timeout by Marquette. Everything knotted up at 51 apiece. It really feels like the last few minutes of a national championship game here in the Al McGuire Center. Now you have 4.6 seconds. Maybe go throw a three-pointer from Izzy. Might have to feed it quickly to Lauren in the post for a buzzer beater. But if you're Marquette, you got to be relaxed here. You can't have the excitement get to you. Can't get the emotions go to you. Easier said than done it's with easy, a young for team. For sure, for sure. And you know, as a young team, they haven't went through this yet in the season so far. It's been normally a big, bigger lead in the last few seconds for Marquette. So you have to rely on the experience, rely on the coaches just to relax these players down do what they do the best and hopefully get that winning basket but if they don't we're seeing overtime which in a way free basketball free is basketball. Nice but it's not like Marquette is down looking for that tying shot the game is tied right now and Marquette trying to get something going after a relatively unproductive last yeah. few minutes no scoring in the last 233 They've got a chance to redeem themselves in the next 4.6 seconds. On the floor for the Golden Eagles, King, Spingola, Anderson, Van Clunen, and Lubo. Lubo. Big moment here for Lubo and King as freshmen. For sure, I think Lubo is going to be pay, being passing the ball into King, and King will see the read, what she sees. She might take it for her own. She might find Izzy. She might find Lauren, but Lauren's being blocked right now by Wolf. And here's the inbound. Lubo. And another timeout by King. Or by Marquette. Excuse me. And this is going to take a little longer here. Yeah. The longest 4.6 <laughs> seconds. It really does. I think of everyone's lives you got in the Al McGuire You center. got Chloe now checking back into the game, which will not only bring a more of a rebounding presence, but more of a post player who's able to get the ball, go in the post, and use her back to her advantage, and then go with the reverse layup. And we'll see what Coach Duffy draws up this time. Marquette out of timeouts at this yeah. point, so it's now or never. It's now or never. You got to just don't have to think about the inexperience. Just let the moment live for itself. It's not like you're looking for that shot to tie the game going into overtime. You're already tied. You're winning. You're looking for that winning shot. Now Murata on the inbound. Murata tries to get it off. Instead, Scheid intercepts it. Half-court shot. No good. We're heading and into I, overtime. I think that's what Megan Duffy wanted to happen. She looked, she looked a little excited when they, they saw that play. Obviously, you turned the ball over, but it's tough to make a half-court shot. And as things go, that's a pretty low-risk play. Yeah, it is. It, we get in some free basketball here in Milwaukee on a Thursday evening, but Marquette's offense has to get going. They haven't been able to get a shot in within the last two minutes and 34 seconds. Three turnovers within the last two minutes and 34 seconds. And that's something that Megan Duffy's offense has to clean up. Defense, still play like you've been. Play aggressive, get the double coverage on there because that's been working in the second half. And what a steal by Shide on that last play. Yeah. To completely turn the tables there from Marquette trying to go for the game winner. 
to then Northwestern having, albeit a far-fetched shot, but still having a shot to win it. Yeah, and I think you, right now, it's gonna, it's gonna be, this next five minutes of overtime is gonna be a lot like what we saw within the last four and a half minutes of that fourth quarter. And boy, just about to go get underway. The first overtime game in the Megan Duffy era. Yeah. And to start out will be Rubos, Bingoa, Anderson, Van Clunen, and King. And it'll be Anderson and Wolf. Abby Wolf on the jump ball. Two inch height advantage for Wolf. And that one goes out of bounds, almost a Marquette bench. And that'll be Wildcats ball. 4.55 to go. Get another batch of popcorn popping. Yeah. A few more batches than I think we were expecting. Pulliam against Bingola. Looking for some type of space. Screen. Pull up, shot, good. Nothing but net. And Northwestern takes the lead in overtime. Lubo. A little bit of a risky pass right there as Pulliam was coming on King. Great defense here by Northwestern lately, but Van Clunen with the open shot, no good. LT Anderson offensive rebound, and she draws the foul. Talk about a player who's had a big second half performance in the rebounds. Altia Anderson making that her 10th rebound of the day, her fourth offensive rebound leading to a foul and another opportunity on offense. And maybe double-double watch for yep. her. Six points. Looks like she might have been trying to go for eight there. Instead, she passes it. Lubo way up off the mark. Van Clunen and Wolf fighting for the rebound. Wolf wins that one and pull him on the other end against King. Way up good. 55-51. Northwestern. In danger of running away with this one. Northwestern finding themselves comfortable here now to start overtime. That's something that Marquette can, cannot afford to happen. Now they're down by four points here. They only got three, almost three and a half minutes left to get a win. And two free throws for Jordan King. King has not been to the line yet today. Seven points on the day for the freshman. First free throw, no good. Couple Northwestern fans that seem to make the trip. And that's been providing enough of a distraction. That's been the story of the game for Marquette. Now they're two for seven from the free throw line. And the second free throw is good. Back to one possession, three point game here at the L. Approaching about one hour, 58 minutes in terms of the length of this game. Pulliam getting to the paint with little issues, draws the foul. Lubo looks like she might have been just inside the restricted arc. Yep. And she picks up her third foul and Pulliam will go to the line for her fifth and sixth attempts of the evening. First free throw is good. Talking about a player who only had one point coming to start the second half. She is now 13 in the second half, including this overtime. You knew it was just a matter of oh, time sure. until she's sure. gonna get her game going. And she hits both. Five point No now. amount of singing from the band could stop that one. 320 to go. 57-52. Marquette looking to get some life here in overtime. Spingola, she takes one too many steps. Turnover number 22. And Megan Delphi doesn't look happy on her sideline right now. They just weren't able to run the play that was drawn up there and called there by the coach on the sideline. 
It's hard to win games. For sure. When you commit 22 turnovers. Yeah. That's resulted in 16 points off those turnovers for the Wildcats. Burden screened by Wolf. How many times have we seen that tonight? Uh huh. Shy three pointer, decent amount of space, no good. Offensive board by Pulliam, and she gets it to go. She is on fire right now. Yeah, and Marquette has to stop that. They want to get back into this game. And Marquette just looking to get some type of offense here. No field goals in about five or so minutes, and now it's a foul on Wood. And Wood is not happy. McEwen's not happy as he stomps on the court around his bench. Her third foul sends Lauren Van Coon into the line for the first time tonight. First free throw is good. Marquette sti sticking with the same group here in overtime. Second free throw. Spent a decent amount of time on the rim. Almost had to pay rent, but eventually goes in. 59-54, 2.22 to go. Defensive stop would go a long ways. Wow, that's a gift. And Wolf gets the offensive rebound. So Northwestern gets another chance. Two minutes to go in the overtime period. Northwestern with a five point lead. Burden finds Pulliam. Pulliam against Lubo as the shot clock expires. No good, but Wolf gets another offensive rebound. Altia Anderson gets it away. And it Lewis. looks like she's trying to call timeout, but yeah, I'm, I'm they're saying it's Northwestern she ball. She must have went out of bounds. And Northwestern will get a chance to inbound it. A couple fans behind us not thrilled with that call. Yeah, she tried to, I think she tried to get a jump ball there too. Wolf, closely guarded by Anderson. To Burton. 140 to go. Time not on Marquette's side. Here's Pulliam. Wood, 12 seconds to shoot. She finds Pulliam. Who else? But Pulliam off the mark. Altia Anderson gets the rebound. Evades a couple of Northwestern defenders. Gotta hurry it up here. Lubo to Van Clunen. Foul before the Van Clunen shot. So Marquette this close to an easy two-pointer. Instead, no, it's an offensive, offensive foul. foul. Oh, wow. A it didn't, it didn't look like turnover it. there. It didn't look like it from the, just the way the official called the foul on the court. And Lubo now has her fourth foul of the day. Also her fourth turnover of the day. 105 to go. Burton with pretty much a clear path to the basket. You have to think the Golden Eagles are starting to get a little tired here. Yeah, they got to feel it in their legs. King. Spingola, open shot, no good. Van Clunen and Scheid fighting for it. Jump ball, possession arrow, Marquette. 50.8 seconds left. You start to think that might be too little, too late at this point. That's what I'm thinking right here. Now, if Marquette can get a three-point shot, they're still down by five points. If they get they get a two-point shot, they're still down. So either way, it's gonna, it's hard it's hard for Marquette to get back into this game within 50.8 seconds. Not saying that they can't. They're gonna have to do a lot on the defensive side. Crazier things have happened. Oh yeah. But they need a few things to go their way. And Duffy's meanwhile, during this quick break, Duffy trying to squeeze in an impromptu timeout. Officials are saying, hey, get on with it. It was a nice try there by yeah. Duffy. It might have helped in a little bit. Who knows? We'll see right now. King on the inbound. She finds Lubo. Lubo Van Koonen. Van Koonen gets the shot to go. 
Still down five with 44.1 seconds left. And that's a timeout. That's gonna be a timeout by Northwestern there. And just to bring the ball into the other side of the court for them to relax a little bit, use some more time in their advantage uh, for here. Hopefully it can help Marquette just got to take a big defensive presence right here to stop the ball. Try to get a quick turnover, lead that to a maybe a three-pointer, the best scenario for Marquette. But you still, it's just tough for Marquette to get back into this game right now, John. And they have scored five points since the 237 mark in the fourth quarter. Ooh. It's hard Not to good. win games like yeah. that. And it's also hard when you have 23 turnovers on the night. You know, a lot of great lessons here for this Marquette team. But the way they kept themselves in this game and, and leading it to a close game at the end of the regulation now led themselves into overtime. Like you said, a lot of good learning, teaching lessons coming from this game that's going to help them in the long run. And it might help them when they face another good opponent in just two weeks from now in Mississippi State. And really not much time to dwell on it when you have Mississippi State, a perennial top tier college basketball team, not far away. Yeah. You have two games, you have one game separating the end of this game and the Mississippi State game, and that is the Green Bay game, Green, the University of Wisconsin Green Bay next Tuesday night in Green Bay. Another team that doesn't maybe have the national recognition that you would expect for, say, a Mississippi State, but regionally one of the better women's basketball programs, not only in the state, but all across really that Midwest region. Yeah. And for a while until really Carolyn here got Marquette into that top level that she did the last couple years. Green Bay was considered the best team in the state of Wisconsin. So an important in-state rivalry there. And it's going to be another good teaching moment for this team. A good top-level opponent on the non-conference schedule to help them build what is needed to get back to that Big East championship game that they were last year. And Looks like we're just about ready to get back underway. It's Valde King, Spingola, Van Clunen, Anderson. If I think if you're Megan Duffy, when you fit, when the, this game finishes, you have to be proud of what you've seen from your team fight and what brought to the table here tonight, regardless of a win or a loss. And still a little more time to do something, but yep. You have to think they're going to be fouling immediately. And right away fouling Pulliam. So she will head to the charity stripe. 43 seconds to go. Pulliam is 5 for 6 from the line today. Certainly not a lack of opportunities for her. Nope. First free throw good. So 62-56. Marquette running out of time to do things too. Second free throw off the mark. Valde runs the point. Screen by Van Clunen. Marquette needs a three at this point. Jordan King, can she deliver off the mark into the hands of Altia Anderson, but knocked out of her hands. Missed foul there, I think, that, and that's what Megan Duffy was really trying to fight for. They're gonna call, wow. So Van Coonen with the foul instead, which will bring Burden to the line. That's really interesting because three Marquette players got thrown to the ground underneath the basket there by Northwestern. And that's really, I think that's what Megan Duffy was really fighting for from the officials. Well, to little avail, so Burden hits the first free throw, 63-56. And hits the second. So it's a 15 to 5 run since that 237 mark in the fourth quarter. It's not been a great end to this one. No, it hasn't. And I think 
take. Just having those extra miles, extra minutes on the legs of a young, inexperienced team that really showed a lot of promise here tonight against a good non-conference opponent in Northwestern. Just got to them in, this, in overtime. Just a little too much here. And I think when you look back at it, they didn't make a single basket within the last two, two minutes and 31 seconds of that fourth quarter. And going back to that 237 mark in the quarter, since then, in the seven or so minutes since, Marquette has made one field goal. Yep, and it's tough. And on the night, Marquette is 22 for 56. That brings you to a 39.3% from the, from the field goal, that's not a healthy stat there. King to Anderson. Can Anderson do it? No, it's a traveling violation. Turnover number 24. And maybe a symbolic end if that is Marquette's last possession coming on a turnover. 24 turnovers on the night for the blue and gold. And Northwestern will just Looks like run this clock out. It was a valiant effort from the Golden Eagles. It was a good effort. It just got to them a little too late in the fourth quarter and definitely here in overtime. You see the signs of hope for the Meg Duffy era and then a sharp reminder that there's plenty of more work to be done as that will do it here. Marquette loses 64-56 and a real tough one, this one's gonna hurt. Yeah, it's gonna hurt for a while, but the good thing is that they don't have to play another game until next Tuesday, so they get a little bit of rest maybe tomorrow, but then get back to work, because you got a good team to face next next Tuesday up in Green Bay against UW-Green Bay, and then you got Mississippi State following that. So three, two good games coming up for Megan Duffy and her staff. A lot to improve on, and they can definitely improve in the high note, but a very good sight from what we saw here tonight against a good Northwestern team that they went against. And for many of these freshmen, this is their first time in a real for sure. main. Every possession counts what's gonna happen down to the wire game. So it's a telling sign that, hey, they were able to stick with it as long as they did. Couldn't quite finish it up though. Yeah, and you talk about how the last two minutes and 37 seconds of the fourth quarter and then they go into overtime and not able to get a lot of shots in the basket hurt them and the defense just wasn't there so much in that overtime to help Marquette's lacking offense stay in the game. And as you said, on the bright side, chance to change things around in an in-state rivalry against UW Green Bay. What does Marquette need to do differently in that one? I think you're, it's all about if you're going to get Selena Lott back into the game. It, I don't know how long, we don't know how long her injury is. Hopefully it's just this one game that she's out. But if you add her into the rotation now for Marquette, it brings a little bit more energy into it and a little bit more of a feeding player that you can go to and not rely so much on a Lauren Van Clunen, Rizzi Spagnola, and, and Jordan King. And you have to think this game would have been a lot different had Selena Lott had her been available yeah, for and sure. probably then had her shot going. Yeah, for sure. And that will just about do it. On behalf of John Leuzzi, Amy Galicheski on the sideline, and me, John Steppi, thank you for tuning in to this MUTV broadcast of Marquette Women's Basketball. We will be back on the airwaves in just 48 hours as Marquette Volleyball has senior night against the Villanova Wildcats. So thank you again for tuning in tonight. And see you all on Sun or on Saturday.